How's it going guys? Kels Prime here with another Anthem video. So today I wanted to go through a bit of Storm. IGN released a video. I know they also just released an Interceptor video, but I'm holding on to that one so I can do my skills and abilities video. So I'll do that shortly after this one. So look out for that one. On top of this, we have a little bit of gossip here and there, a bit of news that I'm gonna be bringing to you. So without further ado, let's jump into the video. If you find this video useful, a like rating would be awesome. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new for more Anthem news and don't forget to share. So IGN released a video showcasing the abilities and capabilities of Storm. As we know, Storm is a magical based character with plenty of explosions and plenty of damage. It is pretty much the javelin that you want to go with if you pretty much like the explosion type of frame. We know that Ranger is a single target enthusiast, Interceptor is the ninja type melee enthusiast, while Storm, unlike the others, has the ability not only to hover in the air for longer durations, but pretty much rain down all forms of elemental magic on the opponents. As you can see in the video, it pretty much takes no prisoners, but with that said, it is extremely weak. It does take a lot of damage and it does go down fairly easily. So it will need support and it will need defensive capabilities or a Colossus at hand in order to protect it. But with the shield that it has around while in midair, it does gain a damage reduction, which Bioware decided to add as a final last minute addition. They realized it was a bit too weak so adding the shield gives it a bit of damage reduction, which does make a difference. What makes Storm stand out from the rest is the fact that it can just constantly rain down havoc. Not only that, it can also freeze targets, creating the opportunity for multiple combos. It can also detonate. It's just really, really, really good. At the moment, this class for me just looks absolutely fun to play. I will be going over Interceptor and Colossus next. I will be doing those this week, so do look out for them. And I hope you enjoy them. They will be a character breakdown. They will have their skills, abilities, and everything that goes with it. And hopefully, uh, maybe I'll find a new class that actually is even better than Storm. Who knows? So let me know in the comment section below, what class are you most looking forward to? Are you looking forward to Colossus? Are you looking forward to Interceptor? Ranger? Or are you like me looking forward to Storm? I do like the Ranger as well. I do like the fact that it's a single target, but come on. When you can see the Storm raining havoc on top of all its enemies, and it is AOE for the majority of the time, you just can't stop but say this is the class for me. It also looks amazing. With the different nodes on its arm, it's just a really, really nice class to play with and a really nice class to use. Well, with that said, on to some news. So, keeping to tradition, I went through social media again to see if there was anything interesting to report on. And lo and behold, Ben Irving and Mike Gamble just don't seem to disappoint when it comes to little tidbits that could be of import to some of you. So, we have Gino asking, will melee damage be linked to pilot level or gear score? Which is kind of important, considering your pilot can level up to level 30, your gear score has no set value as of now. When Michael Gamble was asked what the maximum gear score will be, his response was play and find out. So they won't be revealing this sort of information, at least right now. Ben Irving responded to his question with gear score, same with ultimate. Your ultimate, melee and skills will be dependent on gear score and not your pilot, which is pretty awesome because obviously this means that you can deal more damage. Hearts of Vancouver asked, is there a AFK vote kick in matchmaking or are we stuck carrying someone? Ben Irving responded, no vote kick. We think too many negative behaviors come from this. We do have ways to AFK kick someone though. Now I personally do and don't agree with Ben Irving here. I think it's a double-edged sword. I don't believe that you should kick someone if they're bad and you're carrying them. However, if they're AFK, then I believe you have a right to kick them. But just because someone is inexperienced or they're new to the game or just aren't skilled enough as you are, doesn't give you a right to kick them. They've got every right to be in their group as you do. As long as they're pulling their weight and they're trying and you can see that, 
then I think it's fine. I've pulled through many people in matchmaking when it came to incursions and other stuff, but that's my personal opinion. However, there is no vote kick, so what's the alternative? And I'm glad you're thinking the same way as me here, because the next question that was asked is pretty much going to follow up and respond to that notion. Do players get kicked after too much inactivity, or do they just stay sitting there? And Ben Irving said, kicked. So if the player is inactive anyway, there is an active timer available, and if no response is made, they get kicked. And then matchmaking will then recommence, and you can bring in new players. Captain Lunchbox, awesome name by the way, asked questions about loot. If something drops while on a mission or in a stronghold, and I miss it due to lightning and fire raining down from my storm javelin, do I just miss out on it or will it be collected for me and can I retrieve it in Fort Tarsus? Michael Gamble responded, you'll get it, no worries. Now the way Destiny 2 handles this, if you get an engram in the open world, in a strike, in a raid or anywhere else and you don't have the inventory space to pick it up or you simply miss it and don't see it, it will go to your postmaster. Obviously there's a limit to what your postmaster can hold and then it starts deleting the last available item and places it with the new one. However, your items do go to the postmaster. So it's nice to see that some form of function like this will be an anthem. Now this next one is pretty damn awesome. And when I say awesome, I really mean it. So a bit of background before I get to the question. In the division, you can equip every slot with an exotic. The exotics aren't great in the division, but some of them are, like the house. But if you want to equip a full set of exotics, there is zero restrictions preventing you from doing that. In Destiny, you can only equip one exotic armor and one exotic weapon. This has been the same since Destiny 1, and they've decided to continue with this notion. Even though you can collect tons of exotics, they simply won't allow you to equip more than one on each side. So Brendan asked, I understand the loot and it's much like any other system, so easy to follow. However, will we have a loot equip limit? Say masterwork, legendary limit of equipped items, or can we deck out full god level? Ben Irving responded with no limit, which means you can have full masterworks or full legendary gear sets. This is pretty, pretty awesome if you ask me. It means you're not restricted in any way, shape or form in how you can actually customize and gear up your javelin. I mean, thumbs up for Bioware for enabling this set feature. I think it's brilliant. It's something I've wanted in Destiny for such a long time, but they won't give it. But the fact that they're giving you no limit in customization in the way you actually want it, I think is a really, really good thing. And this will only enhance the builds that you can build for set motions. And let's not forget, Bioware has already enabled five loadouts per javelin, which means you can have a different loadout for specific purposes and playstyles. How awesome is that? Stephen Kovic asked, if you and a group start a stronghold, for example, but can't complete it due to its difficulty or any other reason, you know, family may come round and you have to stop playing. Do you lose any loot you find while playing, i.e. do you have to complete the event to get the gear? A reasonable question, some games do require you to complete the set encounter before you can walk away with the loot, walk away with the XP, and if you abandon it halfway through, you lose everything. Ben Irving said, you keep the loot and any earned XP when you leave, so you have the choice to leave at any point you want. Obviously, if you make it to the end, you get better loot because you get better rewards when you fight the boss and open the chest. However, if you go in there for a little bit of a farming session and clear out some sections and get something decent, you can leave at any point and all that stuff will be with you along with the XP collected. So it's a win-win situation. Good stuff. And that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you enjoyed the Storm video playing in the background. I pretty much am a massive admirer of Storm. It's just looking like such a fun class to play. I will be covering the Interceptor next and finally the Colossus with skills and abilities. I've hit 1500 subs right now. I, I mean, I'm my mind is blown away. On the 24th of December, I had 1,133 subs. Now, now two, just over two weeks later, 
I've hit over 1500 subs and I can't thank you guys enough for the amount of support that you've shown. I really do appreciate it. So thank you very much. If you made it this far in the video, leave a hashtag with the javelin that you want to play when the demo is available on the 25th of Jan or the 1st of February. Until the next video, Anthem enthusiasts, remain legend.